That car has 850 horsepower, 4,000 newton meters of torque, and it weighs 990 kilograms. And it's powered by electricity. This car is the brainchild of Lord Drayson. It's called the B1269EV, and it started off as a Lola LMP1 car. In fact, this is the chassis that Paul Drayson finished Le Mans in. It's now the fastest sub 999 kilogram electric car too, posting 205.139 miles an hour over the measured mile. I'm the least qualified person to talk you around this incredible motor car. So Paul Drayson, owner of the whole project and the brains behind it, let's just have you talk us through the main points about this incredible car for a kind of car nerd audience. We started out with a Lola LMP1 car, correct? Yes, that raced in the Le Mans 24 hours in uh, 2010 and was pretty competitive. We, we came third in the, in the championship that year and that was our starting point. Take a current Le Mans prototype car and convert it to 100% electric drive and then put on it all the different technologies which are now available to optimise the performance of the car. Really discover just how fast and how far an electric car can go when it's using the latest technology. The thing that, that, that I really believe is that this technology is going to be transforming the cars that we drive in the future. We've got to get more electric cars on the road. Things like the charging of cars with cables, which are you know, clutter and inconvenience people. We're developing wireless charging technology with this car. That's another technology which is coming. The tyres that are being yeah. developed, you know, looking at the way in which you develop the tyre compounds to suit that very high torque that comes to electric drivetrain. It's, it's a fascinating area because there's more innovation and technology development going on here than there's been for, I would say, like 50 years within, within the car industry. And the beauty of doing it in a motorsport context is you don't have to play with legislation, do you? You can go yeah. out there and learn yeah. in a sensible way, in a more pioneering way, because yeah. you're not held back with legislation and, and testing and all the other stuff. I would say overall, the thing that I think I'm most proud of in this car is the performance we've been able to achieve with it within the weight limit. We wanted to show that we could use lightweighting technologies to bring in a car which was under the class weight limit of uh, 999 kilos. This car weighs uh, 995, just over 995 kilos in this configuration. And of course, people worry about the weight of batteries of electric cars, how does that affect the handling? What we've shown here is we've been able to produce a car, we'll do uh, you know, pretty considerable speeds, 290, 220 mile an hour. It's got 300 kilos of batteries in the car in total, and the car comes in at 996 kilos. So, the, the million dollar question, or I suspect more than a million dollar question is, how long until we've got a battery technology that allows this to do a stint at Le Mans? Well, today, in laboratories, research laboratories, those batteries exist. They're uh, pretty hairy though, in terms of how they perform when they're at their limit, and they do slightly surprising things. So they're not suitable yet to be put in a car which is gonna be raced or, or used on the road. But I actually think that the pace of battery technology, that within five years, that laboratory tech is gonna be ready for use in cars. A lot of testing, particularly a lot of safety testing, uh, understanding how the batteries perform when they're at elevated temperature, all those things will be uh, taking place. There's billions of pounds being invested in that right now. And that's an area where the, the UK does have a scientific lead. We're re really good at that type of technology. Also the electric motors, those are motors which are, came from Oxford Gas Motors, a spin-out company from Oxford University, absolutely state-of-the-art motor. So I think the, the encouraging thing for me is that, you know, Britain's the world leader in motorsport engineering. You know, we, we dominate Formula One, we have for many years in terms of our motorsport engineering. Where we're based in Kedlington is at the heart, if you like, of Motorsport Valley. We also have the technology to be at the front of electric motorsport engineering. And with the Formula E Championship coming in about a year's time, we believe that we're uh, really in a, a good position to exploit all that we've learned over the last three years and apply that to the racing championship. It doesn't mind going 20 miles an hour, 5 miles an hour. And it's, it's very easy on the throttle as well, yeah, isn't it? The calibration is yeah. very easy. Yeah. So, you, so it's very 
flexible. So in terms of a car that you'd be able to drive around town very easily, park, sit in traffic, you know, start, stop, start, stop, it's absolutely perfect. Um, and, then, and then when you need performance, that, that ability to deliver that instantaneous push. And go faster than a Veyron. Is quite something. Um, I'm not bored with this conversation, but I've got the opportunity to drive it again, so I'm going to go and drive it again. Getting in and starting the B12 isn't a matter of a moment. In fact, it takes time, you have to really listen, and you have to concentrate. Wow, this is freakish. I just pressed a button that said high voltage. Reminds me of that Electric Six song. Wow. Completely silent. Wow. It's a spaceship. Paul Lord, well, Paul Drayson just said he has no interest in the internal combustion engine anymore after this thing. So we're on wet tyres that are effectively cold, and I'm on a runway. This is freakish. It's a spaceship. Me, that's fast. Jeepers, creepers, it's fast. Oh my lord! Lordy, 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 that's fast! Lordy, 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 that's fast! There's an honesty about this because it's not trying to sort of have a hybrid about it. The performance, dearie me. And the brakes. Oh, that bump was exactly. I mean, that is mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Struggling slightly with my vision here. Wow, this is something entirely new. Something entirely new. That's just the talk. I mean, I'm doing 135 miles an hour there. How does that work? It's the future. It's the future. That is truly extraordinary. Now for those of us who don't get to sit in beautiful racing cars the whole time, part of the joy of these things is how cool the cabin is. Look at this steering wheel, okay? 
Um, it's unlike anything I've used before because it's all about ohms and isolation and voltage. The way it works is this. You have three positions, obviously no ignition, no nothing. You just have P1 and P2. P1 is like the standby, it's the first key on the ignition. And that lights everything up and gives you some idea of the fact that we've got 13 volts and all the other stuff that's going on. When you put it into P2, you then have to wait and press this rather worrying looking red cow button called HV enable, that's high voltage. So that gives us all the power. These things then light up. And at that point, you just put your foot on the brake, press the neutral button, and then press the drive button to go, come back to neutral and press reverse. I mean, it's that simple. We've got nine levels of traction control. I was on about seven. Um, and then after that, it's just away. You've got a radio button and get on with it. It's actually quite simple. And then you end up with a page like that. That speed number tends to worry you because it's quite high and the state of charge starts at 100 and depletes down to naught. Um, that simple. Yeah, uh, that is mind blowing. Quite often, the way that someone like me who's a bit limited with descriptive phrases will describe a car with torque is that it kind of picks you up and puts you a bit further down the road. It's instant. This picks you up, it puts you a mile further down the road. That's just extraordinary. We're at Elvington, as I said, but we need some context, don't we? Um, you've seen how fast I think the car feels, but you need some context to work out just how fast it really is. I'm in a Jaguar XFRS. It's a conventionally very, very fast car. I've just figured it at well under 10 seconds to 100 miles an hour, four and a bit to 60. So let's see what it's like in a straight line versus that electric car, which has, wait for it, 4,000 Newton meters at the back wheels. So, I've got all my systemy things off, and um, yeah, we'll give it a go. Could be quite interesting. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I mean, it's so far ahead, it's not even fair. I mean, I... Mm. Yes. That's an electric car and it's just done. Okay, it was a bit sluggish off the line because it's traction control hold it back a bit and it's actually on wet. But if I'm doing 0 to 100 in 10 seconds, he's doing 0 to 100 in, well. Let me show you the numbers now on the screen, how that accelerates, because they are mind numbing. Here they are. Is this the future of motorsport? And if so, is it a future we should want? The speed is truly extraordinary, but the lack of noise and drama is a bit worrying for me. But engineers are very, very clever people, and I suspect they'll be able to make batteries that last a lot longer and also make noise that we will all enjoy.